Hello, my friends. Jacob is here once again. Thank you for spending some quality time with me, for pressing the play button, for subscribing and doing all the amazing things that you do that help this channel to grow and reach more people. Sometimes some of the people, I don't think they're listening to what I'm saying. I don't think they're catching on. Some people, but not all the people, most of the people like you, they understand that, you know, the most important thing today is really faith. Faith in God, okay? And, uh, and what, what Christ has said and has promised us, he will deliver. I, I spoke in the last show about overcoming the world, right? How Christ overcame the world, so will you. You're going to have trouble. It's going to be hard. But if you put your faith in God, you're going to be okay. You're gonna, but you got to follow the tenets of the faith. You can't, you can't swerve off of the course, all right? Just because it doesn't seem to be working out for you doesn't mean that you stop forgiving. And just because turning the other cheek isn't working out for you doesn't mean you stop turning the other cheek. Just because these tenets of faith, which are so very important, the most important, if you, if you don't love, you, you don't know God. Because if you hate the people that you see, that you can literally physically see, no matter how terrible they are, even if they are your enemies, you're supposed to love them and forgive them. But that's not what you're hearing in the world. No, of course not. It's what today's program is all about. A uh, shorter program than most. I have a big one coming. Big one, and I was gonna kind of piggy tail this into it. <laughs> that's a good. Uh, that's a good metaphor for the pig. The pigtail, right? The pigtail. It's where the the swine, right, grabbing each other's tails. The pigtail. That's a good description of what I'm about to talk about. Now, you know, I'm not like the most, I'm not like a political guy, right? I don't think one side is better than the other. I think all the duality is nonsense. I think they're, they can be both as ugly and, and both as, as wonderful, right? Because I'm sure there's good in there as well. So I was minding my own business, you know, just minding my own business. And uh, Tabitha Taylor tweets at me, right? Little ad Jacob, check this out, at Jacob Israel. check it out. And I was flabbergasted, but I didn't, I wasn't, um, I wasn't shocked because I know that most people today, they don't really follow Christ, right? The straight and narrow path. They don't really follow it. I mentioned on the last show, sadly, I mentioned how someone had set out, oh, you know, it's, you guys are winning now, but you wait till Jesus comes back. He's going to mess you all up basically. And I said, well, when Christ comes, he loves um, Christ forgives, but people are, you know, they're, they're to turn back. You reap what you sow. It's not like if you love and forgive that the people that are doing horrible things are going to be left to their own devices. No, 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 no. God repays. God avenges. God's arm is not slack that it can't save. You don't think that God's going to correct evil, wicked people? God will correct, but you're not supposed to go in there, right? See, Jesus taught this, an eye for an eye. That's the back in the day. If somebody did something to you, you do it back to them, and then you're square. But Christ came on the scene and says, no, that's not the way. I know that that's the way you thought things were, an eye for an eye. You know, if they cheat, we got to cheat, which is what it kind of sounds like Donald Trump Jr. was saying in his uh, his appearance at the uh, an event from Turning Point USA. I think it's called America Fest. Had a lot of influential people there, Republicans, very influential, you know, Tucker, Tucker Carlson was featured, Kyle Rittenhouse, who became a huge celebrity, he was featured there, you know Kyle Rittenhouse. Charlie Kirk. Whoever that is, I know the name. I see the tweets sometimes. Sarah Palin, Republican uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, and uh, Matt Gates. But Donald Trump Jr. obviously being featured very prominently. And uh, what he said kind of goes against everything that I believe. 
and uh, share on the channel. But once again, I'm not surprised, I'm not shocked. And I'm sure a lot of you listening may even get upset with me. May even get upset with me when, when, when I say that we're supposed to turn the other cheek. Donald Trump Jr. says that these teachings have, we've got nothing from these teachings. He says that, you know, we're playing t-ball, he says, and they're playing hardball and cheating. By the end of his, uh, his I guess, half an hour, 40 minute appearance, he was like, you know, we got to do the same thing. Because Jesus' teachings, they've gotten us nowhere. That's basically the headline. Look, we've turned the other cheek. I understand sort of the biblical reference, he says. I understand the mentality, but it's gotten us nothing. Okay? It's gotten us nothing. Twice said that. So, the most important thing spiritually that there is, we're prisoners here, right? This is not our home. There's more. We're, this is the world system. This is the devil's playground. It's not my place. She said, this is not, this is not your place. But if you're serving God and you're following after God and you are realizing that loving others, forgiving others, that you will get much for this, that you're not supposed to store up treasure here. You're supposed to store up treasure there in heaven. But that's not what's promoted today. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. If someone slaps you on the cheek, turn to them the other. Also, if someone takes your coat, don't withhold your shirt from them. Do to others as you would have them do to you. So there was, there's this uh, four-day event. It's known as America Fest. It was being held in Phoenix, Arizona. Donald Trump Jr. comes out, and the first thing he does is he starts to chant the, uh, you know, the chant, the, the let's go. I can't believe I got to censor the, the name. <laughs> but you know how it's kind of like a euphemism for, you know, hey, oh, you Joseph Biden. Think about that for a second. That's, that's where we are spiritually and morally as a country that our leaders, and sure, I get it, you're angry. I'm angry, right? I look at the world and I see how messed up it is, but didn't I tell everybody that that was part of the plan, that things were gonna get so gross and so terrible and it was gonna be so messed up that we were gonna need a savior. We're gonna need a savior. But obviously the savior that Donald Trump Jr. is talking about doesn't really follow after those tenets or Maybe he's encouraging that we shouldn't do that anymore. I don't know. You tell me. Listen. Contrary to a lot of our beliefs, because I'd love not to have to participate in cancel culture. I'd love that it didn't exist. But as long as it does, folks, we better be playing the same game. Okay? We've been playing t-ball for half a century while they're playing, playing hardball and cheating. Right? We've turned the other cheek, and I understand... I understand sort of the biblical reference. I understand the mentality. But it's gotten us nothing. Okay? It's gotten us nothing. While we've ceded ground in every major institution in our country. There's a problem today. There's a problem today. Because I'm telling you people, God is the only thing that matters. Serving the one true God. You, your life, it's so beautiful, it's so wonderful. You're here, you're now, you're present. There's so much potential within you. But the world's going to tell you, ah, you shouldn't love other people, even if they're horrible. Right? Some people are going to tell me that I get criticized sometimes. Right? I get criticized sometimes. On the thumbnail, you saw the picture of, of the guy with the... Um, had the American flag like a cape, and it was the cross in between, and it said Trump, and it had the uh, it had two guns. Two guns, two, you know, this is not what Christ came to this planet to uh, share. It, it wasn't about force and might. M much to the dismay of many, many Christians. Until Christ appeared, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. Violent people took it by force. But when Christ is here, now we are to be as wise as serpents, but as harmless as doves. 
my goodness, there are so many, there's so many pastors out there, preachers. They're big, big YouTubers, big YouTubers. One, one of them had a video um, and they were wearing armor saying sons of God. And they were <laughs> carrying like, you know, like automatic weapons. And um, his name's Marcus Rogers, you know, it's like, um, I, I, I kind of, I keep tabs on everybody because they're very influential. I even left them. I even left a comment for the guy. I was like, R -r -r because I like his music, right? I like I like the gifts of God are without repentance, and I I like, but I see. You know, he calls it gummy bear Christ Christianity. You know, I guess you have to hate. You got to call out people that are different, and you got. I am not. That's not my kingdom. Jesus said, "My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, I'd be doing everything that you're doing." my kingdom was of this world, Jesus said, I, legions of angels would come and they would fight, right? Because that's what this world expects. That when, you know, that you, you, you should just take arms and just kill, but this is not my kingdom. Moses led people out with nothing but a staff. That was it. A staff. That's what, what, what that's all he had. It's like, all I have in my hand is this, you know, this altar that I built for God when I re returned here from Texas. You know, this, um, this YouTube channel, my, my website, it's all I have, a little bit. God says, what do you have in your hand? What can you use? Moses was like, how am I supposed to help people? What do I got? He's like, what do you got in your hand? I'm like, well, I got a YouTube channel. Got a, you know, I got a couple of hundred subscribers. And now look. But people still are going to have a problem with me saying you need to forgive. You need to love. You need to understand that these tenets of, of the Christian faith, if you want to call it that, they get you somewhere. They get you a lot. They, it's not worthy to be compared, the scriptures say. We don't know what we're going to appear like. Beloved, hear this. Now we are the children of God. It doesn't yet appear what we shall be, but we know. When we see Christ, we'll see him as he sees us. And it's after all of the things that we've endured and after everything that we've struggled and everything, everything that we've seen that was so unfair, it's not going to be worthy to be compared to the glory that was birthed within us. It's getting us somewhere, forgiven people, turning the other cheek. You think that um, forgiveness and not condemning people to, uh, you know, to the depths for thinking differently or being misled. You think that that's the way to do it? Like you got to condemn and you got to, no. Love draws a multitude to repentance. Let God avenge. God does it all. There is a law that's in effect. If you break that law, you're going to have trouble in this world. But you're not going to be okay. But if you're seeking God and you're building that house on a strong foundation, what is the foundation? It's the Word of God. What does the Word of God say? Love God, love others. You can't love God. The scriptures say it's impossible to love God if you look at somebody else and you hate them. It's impossible. We're a, we're a, we're, we're, we're a miserable bunch today, right? and I understand I understand sort of the biblical reference I understand the mentality but it's gotten us nothing okay it's gotten us nothing while we've ceded ground in every major institution in our country to openly to openly now listen there were a lot of interesting people there, Kyle Rittenhouse being one of them. They really, really um, gathered around. He got like a rock star entrance. Even in um, Rolling Stone, that was the picture that I used on the uh, thumbnail. The, their title was, Kyle Rittenhouse is being handed the torch of conservative victimhood for the next generation. Obviously a biased article, right? 
but the picture of it would lead you to believe that he was wearing that. And that's what they want people to think. That's what Kyle represents. I don't think, I think he's a young, young child who, you know, did what he did. For whatever reason, I personally would not want my child to do anything quite like that. I've said it before, taken some criticism for it, but we're not supposed to do that. We're supposed to follow the, uh, the, the, the pattern that was laid out for us. If you don't, you know what Jesus says? If you don't do what I say, what does he say to do? Forgive. What does he say to do? Love. What does he say to do? Not condemn. Not accuse. We're supposed to be humble. We're supposed to be kind. We're supposed to be patient. Doesn't seem like that gets you anywhere. I understand. That's probably why Donald Trump Jr. said what he said. But a lot of people look to him. A lot of people listen to him. He's right. Why shouldn't we cheat? He's right. If they're saying, if they're doing stuff like this, why shouldn't we do it? He's right. It reminded me, ironically enough, you know, last week I, I read a little bit from my novel. I read the scene where Tommy is being questioned by his uh, teacher because he wrote this paper that's pretty disturbing about, you know, where the world would be, you know, in the near future, like literally the near future, 2022 and beyond. And there's a scene where this very charismatic salesman of salesmen, the uh, leader is his name, Elias Livdot, where he speaks. And ironically, Donald Trump Jr.'s speech where he was saying, we got to come together as one. We got to, you know, we, if we can do it together, then no one can stop. We got to put ourselves first, right? America first. It just, it reminded me of this that I wrote many, many years ago, <laughs> many, many years ago. So I, I just listen to this for a second, because I mean, we're not that far off. If he can openly say Jesus's commands, if you don't do as I, if you don't say as I say, you're none of mine. He said to forgive. He said to turn the other cheek. Donald Trump Jr. Just think about this for a second. Publicly to everyone said, it's gotten us nothing. It doesn't get us anywhere. Listen to what the leader says in my, in, my, uh, in my novel. The leader smiles at his worshipers and rises to his feet. He's a giant among men. His presence brings great kings to their knees. His words can convince a man to kill his own son. And the crowd loves him so. He approaches a group of microphones to give his much-awaited address. Today is victory, he boldly declares. Today you stand and your bellies are filled, your pockets are lined, and you're free from disease. All fought when war raged on for many reasons, and none resulted in peace. However, today there is peace, my friends. One goal leads to victory. The members of the overwhelmed crowd throw their hands into the air as if God himself is speaking. We must put mankind above everything else. Are we to continue to look above for answers? Or are we ready to look to ourselves? If a pin were to drop in a crowd, all would hear it. They wait for his words as a homeless man would a bed in a shelter. We are the answer. Religion is not. Millions have died because of a religion. God is not the answer. Millions more have killed in his name. We, my friends, we are the beginning and we are the end. He scans the crowd to make his point clear. We don't need promises of hope. We need promises that are kept. Turn the other cheek and I understand. I understand sort of the biblical reference. I understand the mentality. But it's gotten us nothing okay it's gotten us nothing while we've now, what's interesting about this is earlier today when i was at the gym i'm just back from the gym now doing this not a lot of preparation to this because this all came to me pretty quickly noah had sent me something that was pretty disturbing pretty scary bums you out when you start looking about this, you know, looking at this stuff. And in my next program, I'm going to get into a lot of stuff. So be looking for it. A lot of interesting things. They're all coming together. It's very re revealing, very revealing.
But I said to him, I said, you know, and I shared this on Twitter too. If you're not following me on Twitter, please do. It's um, in the link below. Everything is in the link below. You know, if you want to get a copy of the novel and you want to make it easy, otherwise just go to Amazon. But everything's in the link below. The novel's the thing that I really um, would love for you to share with others because it just the story is, I believe it's incredibly important today. And it'll open your eyes. Uh, you know, it'll open your eyes. So he, he had shared this with me and I said, look, as long as you, and this is one thing that I share with my children, as long as you put your faith in God, and as long as you are doing right in the eyes of God, that means to love others. It's that easy. Love God, love others. If you love others, you're loving God. And what is love? It's patient, it's kind, it's long-suffering. It doesn't cast out, right? It's not going to give up on somebody. It's not going to condemn. It's not going to condemn somebody. Love is forgiving. What did Christ do on the cross? Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. The reason why the... Uh, you know, the Hebrews back in the day and the Pharisees and the Sadducees or whatever, a lot of them didn't believe that he was the Messiah. You know why? Because they believed the Messiah was going to come down and kill people. He was going to be like a warrior, a warrior king. They think that, uh, you know, Trump is is uh, is a Messiah or who knows, right? They're, supposedly the news is right now they're preparing the oil to anoint the Moshiach. Big deal. Big deal. This isn't, this isn't the Christ that I know. This is not the Christ that I know. This is the Christ who asked God to forgive the people that were putting him to death. And God doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. This is not a new age. Sometimes people look, oh, you're so new age. You want to love everybody. You got to condemn people. That's what you got to do. Oh, you got to, you, you don't think that we should take up arms. Oh, you're so... What I'm sharing is not popular. It's not popular to have somebody spit in your face and for you to just wipe it away and say, you know, I forgive you and I'm sorry that you did that. It's not easy. That's the hard road. That's the path. It's straight and it's narrow. And few, that's what the scripture says, few there be that find it. But I know those who find it. There's a treasure. It's a kingdom. So I told Noah, like I tell all of my children, as long as you put your faith in God, you're going to be okay. This is what I tell you. What do I tell you? I said, look at everything that's going on. Be excited. Your redemption draws near. Doesn't mean things are going to be easy. But as long as you have faith, like that's the one thing that I'm, that's why I can smile. That's why in the midst of all the madness, I'm like, this is pretty cool. Like a big movie and I'm the star of my movie, right? God put me smack dab here to be who I am for you. And he put you smack dab there to be who you are for me and for the rest of the world. We are all members of the same body. One body, one mind. Not someone though who is gonna say, turning the other cheek, gets you nowhere. Sorry. So I said, do this. I said, God's arm's not slack that it can't save. And I said, that's why we're supposed to put on, you know, the breastplate of righteousness. What is a breastplate? It's armor. What's your armor? Righteousness. Doing the right thing. Righteousness. The sword is the word of God. Your word, O oh Lord, is truth. The breastplate, the helmet of salvation. These are your weapons, not an automatic <laughs> rifle with your, <laughs> your son of God body armor. Marcus Rogers. He's a talented dude. I've asked him many times too. I'd love to uh, I'd love to talk about these because so it's not just it's not just um a little bit. It's it's a majority of their their idea. It's not the same God. It's not the same God. If I believe in a God that will forgive and will gently guide back, that is the prodigal, that it, you know, has can return after wasting everything that God had given him. And God still, just right there, gonna give me a hug. Give me a hug. Come on, give me a hug. Go get, go kill the fatted calf. What is the fatted calf? The nonsense baloney. That's the idolatry. Go kill it. Let's have a feast. Let me give you a ring. Let me remind you that you're royal. That this is nothing. That's right. This is like the. Uh, this is like the. What I tell you. This is like that metaverse, right? This is. I got attacked for that too. 
by the way, oh, I've been with you for years and years and years. I can't believe you're you trying to lure people into the meta lure people into the metaverse. Give me a break. Watch me for how many years? What have you learned? What have you learned? Oh, you've been such an encouragement to me, Jacob. I can't. I'm so brokenhearted that you would. How dare you? Because what? Some person said, you know, oh, this is, you know, that's the tree. That was my whole video, my last video. If you haven't seen it, you should watch it. It's the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Listen, your icons, your idols are saying we should take arms and we should uh, and cheat some people, right? Some people believe in this. This is, and I'm not talking about one side or the other. Some, these are the leaders. These are corrupt people. And the Lord has their number. You don't think the Lord's going to repay? So after I shared that with them about, you know, this is what it means. This is the armor that we take. I went back to Isaiah 59 because there's an interesting line that God uses that you don't hear about in the New Testament. Wrap yourself in the garments of vengeance. How about that? It's, uh, listen to this. Okay, so in Isaiah 59, we, we're, we're learning that it begins with, Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save. It's not slack. It's not weak. Nor is ear too dull to hear. He knows what's going on. But your inequities have separated you from God. Your inequities, the horrible things you do, you think God has abandoned you. Your evil behavior has separated you from God in your heart. But that's okay. Because God's arm is not too short that it can't save. But... There's a reason that the scripture teaches this. Because God will avenge. That's the thing. Jesus never said, never said, you should, if they're cheating, you should cheat. Jesus never said. The Lord looked and was displeased. There was no justice in the land. He saw that there was no one. He was appalled that there was no one to intervene. There's no one to say, hey, stop being, you know, chooches. Stop being goofballs. Be nice. Be kind. So his arm achieved salvation for him. And his own righteousness sustained him. He put on the righteousness as his breastplate and the helmet of salvation on his head. He put on the garments of vengeance and wrapped himself in zeal as in a cloak. Here's the key. According to what they have done, so will he repay wrath to his enemies, retribution to his foes. He will repay the islands their due. From the west, people will fear the name of the Lord, from the rising of the sun, they will revere his glory. For he will come like a pent-up flood that the breath of the Lord drives along. Listen to this one. The Redeemer will come to Zion, to those in Jacob who repent of their sins, declares the Lord. You'd repent of your sins, you love, you forgive, kind, God's going to deliver you. He's going to repay what has been done to you. As for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord. My spirit who is in you will not depart from you. And my words that I have put in your mouth will always be on your lips, on the lips of your children, on the lips of their descendants from this time on and forever, says the Lord this is Isaiah 60. My, what a beautiful, beautiful passage. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. Upon you. So, it's getting us somewhere. It's getting us somewhere. And I hope that this message helped you a little bit. Just put your faith in more, okay? I'm telling you. God's gonna, God's gonna work it all out. It's already done. It's finished. Give up the ghost already. <laughs> right? Give up the ghost. If you think what a ghost is, give up that dead spirit. Give it up. Give up your ghost. Give it up. 
start living your life in Christ. I love each and every one of you. I hope you uh, do me a favor and share this, will you? Will you like it? Will you comment? Will you subscribe if you haven't? Will you check the bell for notifications so that you can always watch? You know, you can join me on Telegram if you want to get announcements because I know YouTube sometimes forgets. You can join me on, on Twitter. I always send uh, something out, a tweet out, like maybe at least a half an hour before. So I tell people, you know where to go. If you want, let's connect, you know? And um, I love all of you so much. I hope you had a great Christmas. And I hope, you know, whatever you celebrate, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I don't know them all. There's so many. I love you, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. September 10th. Mars hangs closer to the Earth than it has in 6,000 years. Like the light that led men from the East to a child in a manger, it could well be a sign of good things to come. Thomas James shall be his name. The world will change because of him. In the small town of Bethel, in a time not unlike our own, a child with a great purpose is born. Years later, alienated by his peers and abused, Thomas suffers a devastating loss. When it appears he has nothing left to live for in the world, this is when his true calling begins. While trying to escape the sinister powers that be, a terrifying vision haunts him. Miraculous events seem to follow the peculiar young man as he struggles to come to terms with what he was born to do. The stage is set. The time is at hand. The truth will rise and a revolution will begin. The startling revelation of who Thomas James is, truly, will change the lives of those around him and set off a chain of events long ago foretold. There is more to this novel than one might think. Inside these pages hides a treasure just waiting to be discovered. So if you've ever wondered if there's more to life, or why it is we suffer, then this story will not only captivate you, it may just open your eyes to a truth that could set you free. Find out what is in us all that makes us heed the calling. Click it.